So it sounds like you were expecting something visually stunning. Yes. And you immediately experienced what you were expecting. Um, even more so. I even thought it was prettier than I was picturing. Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Chris. I'm Kat. And this is episode number 187. Welcome home. Thank you. It's been a while since we recorded, it feels like. It's been at least a couple of weeks. I mean, obviously, you guys wouldn't know the difference because you still get a weekly episode. Well, don't insult them, Catherine. Well, okay. (laughs) No, I'm just saying because we prepare in advance for when we take some gaps off and stuff for travel. But yeah, it's been a whirlwind month, the last month of traveling between going to Uganda and Kenya, coming home for two weeks, slash also going back home to Kentucky for a wedding, and then the following week going to France for 10 days. Um, My body, I feel like it's been through a lot. So I'm recovering from like an upper respiratory infection and double ear infection. (laughs) The the ailments of children. I know. I feel like a little kid. Um, yeah. So I just got pretty run down during the very end of our trip. So unfortunately, but um, I, yeah, getting better. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed Provence. Um, it was really, really fun traveling around and being back in France. Um, my sister and I visited Paris for a couple of days. Then we took the train into Avignon and did a road trip around Provence, um, ending in the French Riviera, um, before flying home from Nice. And it was a 10 day road trip and it was, it was a ton of fun. It's my first time driving in France, which that could be a whole other episode about tips for driving in France. Um, and renting a car and things like that. Um, so that was a bit nerve wracking in the beginning, but you get used to it pretty quick. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of France content coming up. Yes. There's also, we haven't even finished the Uganda Kenya content. No, we so. still have some more stuff. We just thought we'd break it up with a little bit of France um, there, in between. There we go. Um, yeah. I also brought you back a bunch of stuff. Bunch of little souvenirs. Yeah. Christmas came early in our household this year. I know. I brought you some wine, which unfortunately one of the bottles broke on the way from like Philly to Chicago. I don't know what happened, but... Philly to Cleveland. Or sorry, Philly to Cleveland. We go to pick it up at baggage claim, the box with wine in it, and it's clearly busted. Like something's messed up. It looked fine. And then as soon as I picked it up, there was a puddle underneath it. Oh, my gosh. And it was starting to rapidly, like, hemorrhage wine. And we were like, oh, my gosh, like, did they all break? And it was only one bottle, thankfully. I bought five. Um, The other four bottles were fine. And it wasn't the good stuff. The good wine. Wow. Well, it was good, but it wasn't like the Chateau Neuf de Pop that I brought home. It wasn't the more expensive bottles. Yeah. And I brought home, like, jam and all that stuff. was That was all safe. Uh, It was just the one bottle. So... Not terrible. Thank goodness the jam was safe. I really liked that jam. I haven't tried it. I purchased it at one of the markets that I will be talking about today. We're going to be doing a taste test after this. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might make a TikTok of our little taste test. Oh. Or at least put it on Instagram or something. I mean, my excitement level is now through the roof. I know you are. I know it's it's very exciting. Yes. (laughs) Um, What was your highlight over, let's say, the past week? I would say, uh, well, it was great to see you for you to pick me up at the airport. Chris was wearing his Stetson. I don't know if you've been following along, but this man has been obsessed with his Stetson ever since it first arrived. And it was meant to be just for Kenya and Uganda. And my guess is South Africa next year when we go on safari again. Um, But he came strolling in in his flannel shirt and a Stetson to pick me up at the airport. And I was like, I, who is this person? (laughs) I was like, what is happening? You were coming down the escalator. And as soon as you saw me, it was really funny because you just, you smiled and you were like shaking your head. Yeah. I was just immediately laughing and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. So the Stetson has become your personality. It's a great hat. <laughs> it's a great hat. But it's been good to be home. Um, I've been resting a lot and recovering, cuddling with our cat. That's been lovely. We started watching Ted Lasso together because we started watching the episodes on the plane. That is because we both home. of us are just... Uh, I will affectionately call us idiots in this regard. We thought that we had to have an Apple TV to get, what is it, TV Plus or whatever through Apple to watch Ted Lasso. Yeah. And then we realized that we didn't have to have an Apple TV. And we were like, oh, well, this makes things far easier. 
So yeah, yeah I, I really like Ted Lasso a I'm lot. I'm pretty sure we just binged through season one. No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we watched all of season one yesterday. It was great. It was great. It was Season great. two today, after the longest freaking game of baseball I've ever witnessed in my entire life, it was like yeah. a five hour long game. It went up to 15 innings, wasn't it? Yeah, with a, with a Guardians walk off home run. That's it was just, incredible. It was It was too much. It like was there's, too much there's baseball a thing for is you. Like too much sports. Like uh, this is why I don't like football, like American football, because it easily lasts like four hours and three it's, hours. It's always four hours. It's Catherine. It's like always hold four on, hours. Hold on, hold on. Let's let's consult the person that watches the game. Yeah, but it flies by for you. There are the <laughs> games start at one o'clock, and then the next round starts at like four four fifteen five. No. They last forever. It's a lot of stopping and starting. This is why I find that's true. that so annoying because it's like every two seconds it's like oh we gotta we gotta stop for something else and then finally start again and it's like back and forth and back and forth. The announcers are just finding ways to say the same thing over and over and over again. And I don't know. It's a lot. And it just like I think anything over like an hour and a half to two hours is too much for me. How much time do you spend on TikTok every day? Um, at least it's different. There's different things constantly. Ah, so there it is. Yeah, that's something I like. I'll spend time on things I like. I don't really want to sit and watch a game stopping and starting and refs making good or bad calls left and right for like four plus hours. I wonder if like are you happy with what you do professionally? Because ESPN could have an analyst job open and I mean your your takes have been just spot on. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. M- maybe a second career choice for me or third career choice at this point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, we have football on tap for today. It'll be a wonderful day. Oh, I'm not watching that. <laughs> um yeah, I guess my highlight, in other words, I don't think I got around to answering that question, uh, was going to Cassis, I think, um, was definitely, it's a cute little beach um, town and just adorable, a lot less crowded than like Can and Nice and stuff, and it's just really adorable, and we went to the Calancas National Park um, while we were there, and it was a lot of fun, so I think Cassis was just such a fun highlight of our trip. What about you? What was your highlight of the week? Well, my highlight from this past week was seeing you. I and, just said that you were being, part of that. And being reunited. I was not part of the trip to Cassis. Uh, you were part of my highlight. I mentioned you first. Wow. Wow. I was the segue that went into your <laughs> hatred for... Um, American football. <laughs> yes. And baseball. Um, I don't hate it. I just like... I don't like watching sports on TV in general. Do you like going to games? Yeah. But it's more like a social thing, too. Like, you're not just, like, sitting there watching the whole time. You're, like, doing things. Like, you're, like, talking to people and having, like, an overpriced beer and a hot dog. What? Yeah. You're not watching the game? Like, partially, but you're not, like, laser focused. At that point, you're paying whatever amount of money to go pay more for food and drink. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's talk about today's episode. All right. So today, um, there's a lot of things that we definitely did all around France, especially in Provence. But I thought it would be fun to talk about what it is like to drive through the villages of the Luberon. Um, And this is the Luberon Regional National Park. And it's known for some of the most beautiful villages um, in France. There's actually that are awarded. There's an actual award and a plaque that the city gets or a little like sign that they have that says uh, le plus beau villages de France or villages de France meaning the most beautiful villages in France um, there's quite a few of them in the Luberon uh, what you're mostly doing is visiting all of these charming little towns along the way and it's mostly popular for the lavender fields um, in June and July um, that you can see but there's lots of other beautiful things to see along the way it's not just lavender many of them have gorgeous markets um, and different things like that to check out so we thought well, Let's go drive through that during our time in Provence. And it was absolutely lovely, even without the lavender fields. So we'll talk about that today. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Was this an area that you had ever been to before or no? No. So when it comes to the south of France, I've only been to Marseille and Nice. Okay. So I have not really explored much of like all like Provence and stuff. Okay. So this is also an area that I have not been to. Mm -hmm. Um, So knowing that it was your first time... What were your thoughts prior to arrival? 
Like, what were you expecting? Yeah. So I thought, like, knowing about the Les Plus Beaux Villages de France, um, so the most beautiful villages of France, um, knowing that there were going to be quite a few of them in this region, I thought that it was going to be full of charming hillside cliffs and towns and dreamy villages and lots of local markets because a lot of these villages have um, a weekly market that's full of local products and, you know, produce and meats and cheeses and also, you know, a lot of provincial products such as soaps and things like that. Um, Herbs. Herbs. Yeah. Herbs to Provence. uh, Very popular to find. Um, But yeah. So knowing that, I knew it was going to be very beautiful. Um, I kind of mapped out before we went, uh, just knowing that there are tons and tons of these cute little towns in the Luberon area. Um, I kind of had to make a game plan ahead of time uh, to, to kind of figure out how we wanted to do this trip because you can't really see everything in a day. Um, so today we're mostly going to be talking about a one day itinerary um, and how we did it. Um, but yeah, I mean, my thoughts prior were just, I looked up all these villages ahead of time and realize that they're they're very different from each other even if they're very close together um and yeah lots of great markets you know I'm a sucker for a good market and you know in the summertime it's known for its lavender fields so when I was originally planning the trip we were gonna go for the lavender fields um so I was looking forward to that but I'm very very happy to go when we did because it was less crowded and it was still really beautiful awesome yeah so You are making the drive. Mm -hmm. You've arrived at, let's say, the first of these villages. Mm -hmm. What are your first impressions? Were were your thoughts, did did your thoughts align with what you were seeing and experiencing? Well, even just driving to our first stop, which was um, Sinanak Abbey, which I'll talk about in just a minute, we drove right past um, Gourds, uh, which is a very iconic Luberon town, and it is a hillside village with limestone um, architecture, and it's just absolutely stunning to see from afar because we drove past the lookout point over the village, and I was just completely in awe. I mean, there are mountains in the background, you have this gorgeous village, and we kept on driving through olive vineyard, olive groves and vineyards all the way down to this abbey um, in a valley, and I can see where the lavender fields would be during the months of June and July, and even without them, it was still absolutely stunning and far less crowded than it would be during June and July because that's sort of their peak tourist season. Um, but just seeing all of that really was breathtaking. And I, I, I can understand why some of these do get these awards of the most beautiful villages in France. Um, yeah. And then I was just excited to check out the markets. Um, awesome. We went to a market in one of them and it was beautiful. So so it sounds like you were expecting something visually stunning. Yes. And you immediately experienced what you were expecting. Um, Even more so. I even thought it was prettier than I was picturing. Just That's even awesome. the vast diversity of how the villages looked. Yeah. Um, and they each have their own little unique offerings was, was really cool uh, to see in person for such a short, smaller kind of area. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to hear more about it, but let's let's get the logistics out of the way. When to go, where to stay and how to get there. All right. The easiest way to sort of get to the Luberon is to take the train into Aix-en-Provence or Avignon. Um, We originally took the train from Paris to Avignon. I think it was about three hours. And from there, rented a car. You're pretty much going to need a car to check out these villages. They don't all have train stations. Um, We didn't see any train stations at any of them either. Um, So yeah, you're pretty much going to need a car. Smaller is best. We ended up getting it like an SUV, like a smaller SUV, which is not what we booked, but the original car that we tried to book had a flat tire or the tire pressure was down. So they gave us an SUV and I was very nervous about driving that in these tiny villages. What kind of SUV? Um, It was a Honda HRV. A CRV? No, HRV. Oh. Which must be a European type that they make for them. Or like, yeah, but... And if you're also someone who does not know how to drive a stick, make sure you definitely pick automatic as well uh, because they do have that available, but not every car has automatic. So, But renting a car is probably your best bet to get around there. Again, we can do a whole episode about driving in France. Um, And a smaller car is best because some of these villages are absolutely tiny and parking is very, very small. So just an FYI. Um, As far as where to stay... 
I would say staying in Aix en Provence or Avignon is going to be your best bet. There's going to be a lot more hotels and different places there and Airbnbs available. Um, And also, I feel like the Luberon could either be just like a day trip or a two day trip versus something you need to go and stay in for a while. That makes sense. Um, As far as um, hotels to stay in Avignon, there's the Regina Hotel, which is more of a budget version. It's in a great location. Um, the the um, Augustines Hotel, the Ox Augustines, it's built on the ruins of an Augustinian convent. Uh, very beautiful, also centrally located. And then Hotel La Mirande, which was a, if there were no budget, this is where I would probably stay. And, and Avignon, we went there for a dinner and it's just very turn of the century, belly pock. It almost felt like being in Downton Abbey's drawing room um, when we had dinner there. So very beautiful and cute next to the Pope's Palace in Avignon. Those were stunning pictures. Yeah, I had them all over Instagram uh, during my story. So definitely a cool hotel. If you're going to stay in Axe, I would say uh, Maison Dauphine. Uh, those are apartment rentals. So if you want somewhere, if you pick up things at a market on the way, you can cook and enjoy that and, and your apartment in Aix. Uh, the Renaissance Aix en Provence, uh, it's a gorgeous hotel. It's part of that Renaissance um, hotel chain. Um, there's a pool. It's a great spot to stay. And then also for a budget version, there is the Hotel des Angestan, um, which is built in another convent and pretty centrally located. Um, but yeah, we ended up using this day as a transition day from Avion to Axe. And we visited the Lubron villages doing that. Most people either do a one day from Avion or a one day from Axe and visit different villages. But I really liked the idea of kind of using it as a transition day to get from point A to point B because you get to see a lot of things on the road trip on the way. That's a really good idea. Yeah, because then you get closer because Avion's a little bit further north. You get down to Axe and then you're getting closer and closer to the coast and then that's from there we went to Cassis and Cannes and Nice and all of those places along the Riviera. So I thought it was a great transition day to see that. And it did take about a full day to do the drive. Um, cool. And it was absolutely stunning. So highly recommend doing that. As far as when to visit, if you're going for lavender, late June, early July is when you're going to see most of the lavender in bloom. Um, pretty much after that, uh, a lot of harvests start happening and stuff. So you need to, if you want to see the lavender, that's a good time. Uh, but fall was also lovely. We were starting to see fall foliage um, when we were there in early October. There's less crowds. The weather's still pretty nice. Um, yeah, it was it was a good time to visit in like late September, early October for that time frame. Great. Yeah. All right. So you guys spent one day kind of making your way downtown, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, Let's just go through the the itinerary of the day. So start with where you started mm-hmm. and we'll we'll end with uh, the end of the day. Yes. Okay. So we made about seven stops from Avion to Axe all throughout the Luberon villages um, in the regional national park. And we started out driving straight to Sinanac or Sinan. Sinanic Abbey. Sorry, my French pronunciation is not always the best. Um, I'm still learning. Um, Which is near Gourds, which is a very, very popular town in the Luberon to visit. Um, It's known for its lavender fields. I think you'll see a lot of people, um, you'll see a lot of those famous pictures of this beautiful white abbey with lavender fields in the front of it. Um, If you've seen that picture. It's a very popular, iconic one of the French Luberon uh, lavender fields. Um, That's where that's located. Now, all of the lavender was cut down for the season, so it wasn't there, but the abbey is still just as beautiful. Um, It was founded in 1148 by uh, Cistercian monks, Cistercian monks. Um, And yeah, it was great. It was about eight euro fifty to go inside. You get it's a working abbey, abbey. So obviously, be respectful. Um, especially there will be monks there and people praying and doing different things throughout the day. So, um, and they obviously don't let you into like everywhere in the abbey because people live there. And um, but it was neat for eight euro fifty. You get what they call a histopad, which was really cool. And it's like a little iPad that you can hover over different little spots in rooms throughout the abbey and it'll show you it'll give you a description of that room whether it's like the cloisters or the chapel or something and it'll show you what it looked like back in the day and that was really cool to see because you would lift up your histopad and like move it around and it would show you different areas and what things would look like so that was really fun uh to do at the abbey 
but yeah, it was a neat abbey to visit. It probably only takes about 30 minutes to go through the abbey and check it all out. Um, so a great first stop on the itinerary, especially if you're coming from Avignon. All right, stop number two did not take long to get to because we drove past the Gourds Lookout on the way to the Abbey, uh, but Gourds Lookout, and that is, there's parking right next to it, which is great, and that is gives you this beautiful viewpoint over the city of Gourds, and that is, it's absolutely stunning. Like I was saying before, it has these limestone cliffs. Um, it's a hill, hilltop village with limestone architecture. Uh, very, very beautiful. Um, we actually drove through it afterward on the way to the next place, but definitely take a stop at the lookout. Um, there's a quick sh- parking area where you can go snap some photos just to enjoy the view. Um, so I definitely recommend checking that out during your time um, in the Luberon. Um, also, this is a popular place if you're going to be driving through the Luberon on Tuesdays because it's known for one of the more famous farmer's markets. Um, we went on a Saturday, so it was not there, but we still drove through the town and saw the the cathedral and just all the cute little streets and the beautiful views from the city um, before driving to our next stop on our itinerary. So I highly recommend stopping at least at the Gourds Lookout, driving through Gourds, and if you're there on a Tuesday, definitely go for their market. Since we were there on Saturday, we purposely made a stop at stop number three, which was Apt, and that is known for its Saturday market. And make sure you get there at a good time because most of these markets... Clo- what is what is a good time? Like early because okay. most of these markets close at 1230. So I know some markets around France will close at one or two or even stay a little bit later than that. Um, 1230 is when most of these little farmers markets in the towns will close. So the earlier in the day, the better, which is why I recommend kind of starting a little bit earlier. Uh, we showed up probably around 11 to 1130 which was fine. By the time we found parking, we were able to, to see everything um, and explore the market before everything started shutting down. Um, this is a 900-year-old market and one of the biggest in the Luberon. Rightfully so. It's a Saturday market, so you have both locals and um, travelers passing through the market. Uh, parking can be kind of hard to find if you come a little bit later, so coming earlier is kind of a good idea. Um, but it's a really cute village. We mostly were just there to see the farmer's market. Um, We bought tons of stuff while we were there, including lots of fresh Provence soaps. Um, We bought some cheese. We brought some fruit, um, some jam that we're going to try later, Um, nougat, which we finished. Um, But then they also have things like flowers, uh, fresh produce, um, sausages, blankets, which I was very tempted to buy, but didn't because I didn't know how I would get that home but a lot of cute local products that you can try. And this was a fun market because even my sister was like, this is the only place I've really been to where like, they're just like, try this, try this, try this. Um, So every stand you went to, they were like, oh yeah, like try this cheese and try this cheese and try this one. Or even the place where we bought the jam, they were like, try this jam or this chutney and this, this other condiment that we made. And um, it's like the food court at the mall. Really? Yeah. Try the bourbon chicken. Try the, right. (laughs) It was truly like that. Like we were getting so handed so many things to try and test out. We tried some, yeah, all kinds of things, fruits, sausages, cheeses, like, and we purchased quite a lot too, uh, because it was such a beautiful market. And since we got to try a lot, we were like, oh, we like this. We'll purchase this and eat this later or, you know, um, take it home. This seems like an elevated version of road trip snacks. Oh, way better. Yeah. You got cheese. You got, you got sausages. And then you've got like nougat. The nougat is the best. I love nougat. So I'm going to just, obviously people cannot see us right now Mm -hmm. recording this, but when you said, yeah, we bought jam, we're going to try that later. And you motioned to me. And then you said, oh yeah, we also bought nougat. And you motioned to me again. And I love nougat. And I'm like, oh, that's great. And then your very next sentence was, we ate that. We ate all of it. I'm sorry. Yeah. And you're still (laughs) motioning to me when you say that. And now I'm like, am I being mocked for (laughs) previously consumed nougat? But, but I, I got pistachio and orange nougat and it was fantastic. And I'm sorry that it didn't make it home, but it was too delicious. Um, I brought you home some other, you brought, yeah, you brought home a ton of stuff. Um, Yeah. So you, one thing that I want to back up and ask you about is you said it closes at 1230. Mm -hmm. You got there at 1130. Yeah. This sounds like a larger market. Is it covered? Yes. Is it outdoors? All outdoors. They just set up stands kind of in the street and they block off the street for pedestrians. Okay. So, um, yeah. Was an hour enough 
or did you wish that you had maybe an hour and a half? I think an hour was plenty. Um, and when I say were they you, close at 1230, they're like, they're closing at 1230. Were you scooting to get through in an hour or no? Um, or could you mosey at like you your could pace? You mosey, but we did stop for a while at a couple of places to try things um, okay. or to smell soaps and things. But we were able to, to fully enjoy the market and purchase souvenirs okay. without feeling terribly rushed until like the very end when they were starting to pack up. Okay. Yeah. Fair um, enough. A great village. Another limestone type architecture village. So very similar to Gord's in that way, uh, but a very beautiful farmer's market. Really enjoyed it. But yeah, definitely get there. About an hour to an hour and a half is probably a good amount of time to um, see that farmer's market on Saturday. Great. Uh, so if you do want to go to stop number one inside of the Abbey, uh, you could just go outside and take photos and leave. Um, it does open at 10. So you need to be there like at 10 to get into the Abbey. That'll take you about 30 minutes. Then from there, you spend a few minutes at Gord's Lookout and then you drive through Gord's on the way to Apt. So you should get there within the, like a reasonable time frame. And, and we weren't like super rushing ourselves through all of this. Uh, we just made sure to be at the Abbey at 10. Yeah, it really wasn't like we got there between like 11 to 1130 and got to enjoy it, which was good. But anyway. Yeah, next stop. Next stop. We get in the car. We go to Rusalan, which is very famous, uh, probably one of the more famous villages in um, in the Luberon. Um, it's another one of those most beautiful villages of France. It has that designation. And the second you even park down uh, down in sort of this area below the cliff up there and you kind of hike up there, uh, you can see why. It's very stunning. And it's very unique because it is not limestone like the other two villages we saw at first. It is ochre. So it's got this reddish, yellowish, um, orange type of cliffs. The dirt is very red. Ochre. How do you spell ochre? I think it's O-C-H-R-E. Okay. So ochre. Very similar to like places in Utah um, that oh. and like deserty places, even though it's not desert, I guess, um, but very beautiful. It's perched on this cliff. Even the buildings are made from this this coloring. Um, and actually, ochre was one of the first paints. It would be the first red paint is they would make it because ochre is a mineral. Um, wow. Yeah, it's a mineral. And so these rocks are full of this rich mineral that people could turn into paints. Um, and that's how a lot of the houses are sort of made from this sort of stone and mi minerals and things. So Neat. very colorful village, very colorful uh, cliffs. And aside from it being a picturesque place, you can actually walk along what they call the ochre path. And it's they have a 30 minute hike or a 50 minute hike. Um, and they give you a map for it. And you can go it's right next to the village. You just walk up the path and you get to see all the different ochre cliffs and get good viewpoints of the village in the distance. Very easy to do. Did you guys do the 30 or the 50? We did the 30 minute because we wanted to sort of see a bunch of other things. So we wanted to. And was it that. more of a walk or more of a hike? Oh, it's more of a walk. Okay. I mean, there are some uphills, but we did it in our like normal tennis shoes. We weren't wearing hiking clothes. Did I mean, it take a, you 30 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It really doesn't take long. There's also the one that lasts a little, bit, a little bit over less than an hour or so. But you get to see the cliffs up close, see how colorful and beautiful it is. Uh, we definitely touched it. We were like, what does the sand feel or look like? Um, uh, so that was cool. And it was beautiful. And if you want to check out Rue Salon on Thursday, that is when they have their market too. So you could spend quite a bit of time in Rue Salon, if you wish, um, if you're there on a Thursday between both the market and the ochre path, Very which cool. I highly recommend doing the ochre path um, while you're there and learning more about it. Because apparently it was the ochre is also as a result of the area being part ocean at some point and different things like that. So um, yeah, it was neat. It was really cool to see that. It was a very unique village between all the limestone villages we saw. Awesome. Stop number five, um, we're starting to get into the later afternoon, is Bonnyu, um, another beautiful stone hilly village. Um, we mostly just kind of drove through it. It's a very pretty village, but we kind of drove through it all the way to a winery, which was Chateau Le Canargue, or Canargue. Um, it's a gorgeous estate. 
absolutely stunning and it's known for the AOP Lubron wines that has um, GSM blends as you know Christopher the Gr- Grenache Syrah Movedra they make red white and rosé wines um, and they have free tastings there we were allowed to taste as much as we wanted to uh, while we were there and we purchased a little bit of wine for us to enjoy um, so a great great little stop um, on your little road trip and the town we did drive through as well very cute it is known for its market on Fridays So if you're there on a Friday, you can stop in and go to that market. And then what was going to be our last stop is stop number six, which is the Le Merlin Villages. Um, It's it's another one of the most beautiful villages in France. Uh, Very popular. It has a Tuesday market. So if you're going for a farmer's market on Tuesday, uh, we drove through the village and it is known for the Chateau de Le Marron, which was the first Renaissance castle in Provence. Oh, you that's can really go cool. visit. Um, it's right outside the town. It's very beautiful. We drove past it, and the town itself was also very cute. Um, but we actually went to go to a smaller winery there called Chateau Constantin. Um, and again, another AOP Luberon um, wines that they make, the Grenache Syrah Mavedra. They also are known for the Viognier. Um, it was a cute little winery. It's family run. We were the only people there. Um, and it was 15 bucks for the tasting, but it was free if you bought two bottles of wine. So great little, sp- great little spot to check out. Um, we each bought some rosé there, which was great. Some Provence rosé. I was going to say you are in the heart of rosé country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we definitely tried some rosé. It was very beautiful. We sat and chat with, chatted with um, the woman who was doing the tasting and she was asking about our trip. And... The, she's the reason why we went to our final stop before going to Aix en Provence because uh, we were telling her all the little villages we stopped through and she said oh you have to visit Cucuron and I was like oh where is that and she was talking about how cute it was and how there's like this little basin in the middle of the town and this beautiful citadel and all the stuff and it's a smaller town and not many people go there in the Luberon um, and it was only 10 minutes away because we looked it up on Google Maps and we're like well let's do it uh, so we drove there um yeah, and again, we walked around the town. They had some free parking there. Uh, it's known for this Olympic-sized pool basin thing, sort of in the center of the ta- center of the town. It's very, very beautiful. It's lined by these beautiful tall trees surrounding it, and it is where they have their Tuesday farmers market. And there are also a bunch of little like cafes and things like that surrounding it, so you could go and get a cup of coffee or eat dinner there if you wanted to. Um, And then there's also um, the Citadel Tower at the top of the village, which gives you amazing views over the town itself. But it's just a beautiful medieval town that's absolutely gorgeous. And it's not crowded at all. Very few people go there when they're driving the villages of the Luberon compared to Roussillon and Gourds and things like that. But that was our final stop on the Luberon before driving to Aix-en-Provence. The total drive time was about three and a half hours. Um, but the biggest part portions of that drive time were driving from Avignon to the Abbey and then also from Cucuron to Axe. Um, most of the other drives were between like 10 to 30 minutes apart, if that. So yeah, that's, uh, that's our itinerary for driving the villages of the Luberon. Um, now, so a couple of other villages that you could visit that are great little stops as uh, Minerbes, which is a medieval village. And it's another one of those most beautiful villages in France, has its market on Thursday, and it's known for the St. Hilaire Abbey, which is close by, or Goutz, which is known for its great cafes. It's just a very charming town, has a Thursday market because all these towns have a market day, Um, and also has these restored agricultural terraces that you can walk on around the town, which are very pretty. Uh, We did not have time, obviously, because by by the end of the day, it was probably about five to six o'clock when we finished our visit at Cucuron and then drove from there to Axe. Um, but if you're doing this in a multi-day thing, you really want to take your time, uh, Minerbes and Gult are other great places you can check out on the, um, in the Luberon. And that's visiting the Luberon villages. Do you have anything okay. else or can I, uh, I have, I have some questions. Oh no, that's it. Okay. Go for it. What was your favorite village? Um, that's so tough. I would say I... Man. Gut reaction. Gut reaction. What popped into your head? Apt. Okay. I think mostly because of the market. 
but it was a cute town. And that was the one with the big market, right? Yes, that okay. was the market that we went to because it had the Saturday market. Okay. Yeah. Um, a a uh, a couple is driving through this. Which one is the most romantic? Which one would you definitely want to make time for? Um, as a couple, I would definitely say Rusalon for okay. the ochre path and doing the ochre hike together. Um, it would be a beautiful place. It's a hillside village with gorgeous views of the mountains and the valley and everything in the Luberon. So even staying there would be lovely or just having a nice meal there um, and taking your time would be great in Rusalon. Okay. Yeah. Do you know, I know that you guys self drove it. Mm -hmm. Was there an option to have a driver? I think that they do have tours from either Axe or um, Axe on Provence or Avignon. Oh, okay. That you could do. But we were renting a car anyway. So yeah. we, we just drove it. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything that you would change about or skip looking back? Hindsight being twenty twenty. Would you have spent a little bit more time in one and skipped over another? Would you have gone to a different one? Those sorts of things. Um, I don't think so. I'm really happy that we had the time to see all of them. It sounds like an amazing day. My guess is we probably wouldn't have gone to Cucuron at the end if it were lavender season because we probably would have taken more time checking out the lavender fields along the way. Okay. Um, which, again, the most famous one is the the Abbey at the very beginning, the Sinanek Abbey or Sinan... Senenk Abbey. Okay. Sorry, my pronunciation is not great. Um, so my next question mm -hmm. is, as you're describing this and like, oh, this one's market is this day and this one's market is this day. It, it sounds like it would kind of be a fun little like four or five day, like just spending time, like spending one full day in each village and like maybe buying some food or, I mean... Whether it's like splitting some wine and cheese and sausage in the evening or cooking something with the produce or meat or what have you. Is that something that I'm just building up in my head? Like, would it be too much to spend a full day in each of these villages and like really dive into it? Um, I would say that they're they're pretty small. Okay. Like you can see a lot in like a couple of hours in okay. those villages. I'm not saying you couldn't take your time and enjoy and maybe go to bop around a couple of like cafes or get some wine and, okay. and picnic or whatever. But I would say that they're pretty small. So if you were going to overnight in one of them, which one would you overnight in? Um, I would say Gourds is a beautiful one and Rousselon. Okay. Yeah. And awesome. they also are more popular to visit. So there's going to be more hotels and things to stay in and guest houses. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know that both you and your sister brought home wine. Mm -hmm. Was any of the wine that you brought home from any of these villages? Um, I think my, you... my sister brought home the Chateau Constantin wine. Okay. Uh, she brought home some rosé. Um, mine was all from Chateau Neuf de Pop. Ah, okay. Yeah. Got it. When we Got did it. that tour, which we can talk about on another episode. Yeah. Awesome. This sounds like a really fun day. It kind of reminds me of um, how we made a very slow and deliberate road trip mm -hmm. um, from Stowe to the um, Northeast Kingdom in Vermont, yes. like, and stopped at little, um, like, I mean, a lot of it was like apple cider mm -hmm. donut places and like to get coffee and markets and all of that kind of stuff. It sounds like a really fun day. It was, and it felt a lot like that, where we made all these little stops along the way. Because you could just drive to Aix en Provence, and it wouldn't be that that long of a drive from Avignon. But going through the Luberon was very, very much worth it, and and very lovely to see all these these charming towns and these award winning, beautiful towns, and um, to experience what all of them had to offer. Um, highly, highly recommend it, whether you're there for lavender season or not. Um, yeah. It was beautiful. It was it was probably one of my favorite days other than going to Cassis. Okay. Yeah, which was along the coast. That's great. Yeah. Add it to the list. Add it to the list. Anything else you want to say? Just Provence is amazing and beautiful. And I honestly think we bought the most amount of products at these little at markets that we went to in Provence. Than anyone else in attendance that probably. day. Probably. I brought home a lot of stuff. <laughs> you did. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I bought another it. scarf. Great. Yeah. Um, no, they're, they're absolutely stunning. Provence is beautiful. The Luberon villages are absolutely stunning. Highly recommend going. Um, but yeah, that's 
That's the Luberon in, in Provence. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Have you guys done this before? Is this something you guys would like to do? You can always reach out to us on Twitter at WW Honeymoon, Instagram at Worldwide Honeymoon, or email cat at WorldwideHoneymoon.com. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to WorldwideHoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links, and these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.